Hi, this is the Cat's Library. I'll be your librarian today. In the last video, I went over the grim plot version of the story of Snow White and what I thought the major themes were. In this video, I want to go over and analyze the characters that I missed last time and tell my own variation. For this first section, I'm going to show the sketches from the last video since they were hidden by some awkward editing. Engage! Let's start by talking about the Huntsman. His purpose in the story is to show that the evil queen is terrible to people besides Snow White and to allow Snow White to escape. He either has a redemption arc where he starts fully indoctrinated into the evil queen's philosophy and Snow White teaches him to be a good person. Alternatively, he is initially a contract worker who is torn about doing this because he either needs the money or is scared of the queen. In the thematic framework I set up, the Huntsman is probably someone who is more of a middleman when it comes to life and death. The Huntsman is more scared of death than life, but there are elements to living besides solely survival and killing things. There needs to be a reason for needing to fight for life in the first place. One reason presented is that living a moral life where one doesn't kill innocent children is more important. He takes the heart of a pig to feed to the queen, which might have saved him and Snow White, but he usually exits the narrative after giving the heart. Other versions have different forms of punishment for the Huntsman. Apparently there was even a movie where he was the protagonist. The King is also a character who has lines. He might be someone who was given a chance at a new life with his daughter, but got married to the Queen and got all the joy sucked out of him. Sometimes he dies or is presumed dead soon after getting remarried. His relationship with Snow White, and by extension life, is unclear and varies between versions. His relationship with the evil queen, and by extension death, is also unclear, but it can sometimes be guessed that he is resigned to that he might one day die without having joy in the life that he already has. I think that I've seen a few versions where the king is magically enchanted by the queen in some way also. So he's either completely ambivalent to both, or he's infatuated with death to an unnatural and unhealthy degree, even though he might not understand how synced with death the queen is. Both of these come close to infringing on the Huntsman's niche, but I think that they are distinct. The Huntsman is slightly more on Snow White's side, and the King is slightly more on the Queen's side. Moving on, Snow White's mother is sometimes told to have died later in her daughter's life and the king married the evil queen so that Snow White could grow up with a mother. The way that the good queen came up with her daughter's name and appearance also contains death imagery. Blood is pretty self-explanatory. Snow is indicative of winter which in Europe is when most plants die and shed their leaves and is generally harder to survive if you haven't invented food preservation techniques and is considered a time of death. Finally, the ebony can potentially be associated with death, since it was typically used in crucifixes, chess sets, and has been found in Egyptian tombs, but is also a symbol of opulence and is also regularly used in a variety of musical instruments. So she is probably even more fascinated with death than her husband. I guess he has a type. The Good Queen is barely in the story though, so there's not much else to say about her. The final character, the Mirror, is also in the middle of the conflict, as it fluctuates between saying that the Queen and Snow White are the fairest in the land. Out of the characters, the Mirror is explicitly stated in the text to be the most politically neutral, and hence the most thematically neutral. It is possible that the Mirror has a person trapped in there, forced to do the Queen's bidding which would mean that it was enchanted to be neutral and honest. It could also be an eldritch being which just always told its owner the objective truth, it's sort of like the Glassman from My Dragon Planet story. Maybe the Evil Queen has magic within her which can only be manifested through a visual medium. The Mirror is barely even a character compared to some of the others, and more of a plot device. Originally, I was planning to do my rewrite like this. The youngest princess in the kingdom of Royume and her mother, the queen, were fighting again. Jaeger leaned against the wall of the secret hallway as the midnight torchlight flickered threatening shadows against the wall. 
There was a crash in the room as one of the royals threw a vase against the wall. You could have hit me! The queen screamed. The solitary guard winced and shared a look with Jaeger. The groundskeeper scratched his beard but otherwise had no visible reaction. The queen barged out of the room and glared at Jaeger even though he scrambled to bow to her. She rolled her eyes with a sneer and stormed off. Princess Selene came into the hall with a look on to the back of her mother's head with a level of hatred unorthodox for a gentle woman. The chemise over her pregnant belly caught in the low light. As soon as she turned to Jaeger, though, her expression softened. Tears began to well in her eyes and she hid them by ha putting her head on his chest as he stood up. But that's going to take a million years to complete and would need the proper time to complete, so maybe some other time I'll do that. Also, Royaume is the French word for kingdom and I know I pronounced it wrong because I can't roll my R's. But we're going to ignore that. For now, I'm going to give you a general plot summary and highlights. The Huntsman, Jaeger, is the prince's illegitimate father. He is given full custody of their son so that Princess Selene's honor can be maintained, though he and his son are banished from the kingdom and forced to go to Königreich, where Jaeger is originally from. A couple years later, Snow White's mother pricks her finger and sees the blood on the windowsill and decides on a name. I'm thinking of connecting all these stories so maybe Snow White is related to Sleeping Beauty, such as that her mother is Sleeping Beauty, or maybe her older relative is, which is why the scene was so meaningful to Snow White's mother, who are thinking about calling Edelgard. Let me know what you think the Evil Queen's real name should be. I'm also thinking the connection to Sleeping Beauty could explain why the wish came true, since that would connect the royal family with fairies. So Snow White's mother dies and the king marries the evil queen. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do with the king. For now, I'm going to say that the queen has enchanted him in such a way that he doesn't feel anything. His brain is all foggy and everything that the queen does is perfect to him, even if it involves slowly transitioning his daughter into a serving girl. He'd spend most of the story in bed or holed up in his study with a mysterious illness. Maybe the evil queen had one of the mirror shards from the Ice Queen story, and that was how she enchanted him. He's not really involved too much with the story other than to show that his kingdom will be okay. Maybe. The mirror tells the queen that Snow White is the fairest, and so she hires the huntsman. I'm thinking that Snow White is well-loved in the castle before this, even though everyone lives in complete fear of offending the queen. But Snow White does something especially fair the day that the queen asks. Either that the queen shakes things up and decides to ask who her closest competition is. The huntsman has been struggling since he got banished back to Conagretch. I'm playing around with the Huntsman being a Protestant, and he tried to leave civilization several times to get out of the conflict with the Catholics, but was unable to do that for very long being an extrovert. Technically, Germany, the country Conagrinch is based on, has been historically more accommodating to Protestantism, since it was developed there, than in France, where Rayumi is based on. Maybe Jaeger's parents were still Catholic and that was the one kind of danger that his adrenaline junkie nature couldn't handle. Or maybe he's mildly cowardly and didn't know that Ryumi was even more Catholic. There are certainly holes. Having a son radically changed his way of life to the point that he would do things that he wouldn't even have considered otherwise. Like trying to kill an innocent seven-year-old girl. Snow White asked him why he was doing it and nodded when he explained his reasoning. She just closed her eyes really tight and shivered at him. He couldn't do it. So he sent his son and Snow White off to the mountains. Maybe he had a sibling he sent with them for part of the way. At the palace, the queen socially manipulated the huntsman to stay in for a feast in his honor, even though he voiced that he wanted to leave as soon as possible. When she did the ritual with the pig's heart, she actually aged 30 years instead of becoming immortal. So she ordered that Jaeger be executed. Whether he actually was executed could go either way, since I accidentally developed him to the point that it would be really sad if he died, but maybe he somehow faked that too. 
Meanwhile, Snow White wandered off alone and ran into the dwarves. Maybe she overheard one of her travel mates complaining about rations and then left to find her own food. She tells the dwarves her full story and they retrieve the prince and her guide back to the house. They lived there for a few days before news of the huntsman's death reached them. The prince, who I'm going to tentatively name Charlie, decided that he wanted to try to reconnect with his mother. Snow White decided to stay with the dwarves because they needed a housekeeper, and she didn't want to take the risk that someone would recognize her on the journey and try to either kill her or turn her to the evil queen. As the prince leaves, he promises that he would come back for Snow White. She smiles sadly and says that he won't come back. No one ever comes back. Eleven years later, she feels that she was proven right. But one day, she gets a letter from Charlie saying that he's very sorry, but he had got caught up in a fiasco with an uncle getting turned into a beast for a little bit, and everyone in the castle turning to stone. There was a bit of a complicated situation, and Ryumi had to reinstate itself politically taking a firm stance against piracy and have everyone overcome the side effects of their curses. Some of them, such as Charlie, aged physically and mentally in the course of several seconds, which definitely didn't feel like his brain was going to explode. Maybe all the people turned to stone had also lived in a shared dream space during that time, which could be another reason that he mentally matured. He spent a few months learning to read and getting to know his mom and grandmother, before issuing this letter citing his arrival and a procession of knights to help Snow White take back her kingdom and then avenge Jaeger's death. Eleven years ago, after the queen ordered Jaeger's execution, she got a magically transmitted disease for a year or so from the pig, and then she was preoccupied with another fairy tale. This could possibly be Sleeping Beauty, if I decide that Snow White is related to her. Apparently, Sleeping Beauty can be considered either a French or German story, but it might be a little bit more French? I need to do more research on this. Or maybe she rented out the mirror to a friend and then didn't get it back for a few years. Whatever the reason, she is preoccupied with other things which do not involve regularly checking if certain people are really dead. Snow White didn't register as the fairest in the land again until she gets the letter and sings to herself in the house throughout the day. Maybe the mirror takes self-confidence into consideration. I like the three ways that the queen tries to kill Snow White, but since the spell supernaturally aged her, then the disguises are less a necessity than an uncontrollable drastic change in appearance. Come to think of it, maybe she didn't ask the mirror who was the fairest for so long since the first attempted murder of her daughter permanently ruined her chances. So she tries to kill Snow White a few times with a couple months between the attempts, and a good deal of screaming as if the princess passing out was an accident. Maybe the thing that Snow White did to officially be considered the fairest in the land had something to do with apples, which is why it, that was the first attempt. She stays alive through some leftover fairy magic protecting her, and she goes into the dream space alone. The dwarves put her in a glass coffin, and when Prince Charlie comes back to find her, then he figures out what's up and hits her back until the apple chunk comes out. They have their wedding, but in my version, the evil queen goes into hiding with her mirror, and Snow White's father goes out on a quest to track her down. Maybe he's still even under his own spell, and maybe he has some sense of duty to her being his wife, or maybe he wants revenge. I haven't really decided yet. And they all live happily ever after.